Well, blessings, blessings, and blessings, and blessings. We want to welcome you to this edition of Spotlight on Ministry. And we praise God for this opportunity to come your way. Spotlight on Ministry is a program sponsored by the Interdenominational Assembly of Churches USA. And it's our joy to share with you on this wonderful Lord's Day. During this time, we praise God and we share spotlight on the ministry gifts that are among us today. We are so excited and we're happy to have as our special guest, none other than our own Bishop, Bishop Marjorie Hope of Toledo, Ohio. And we're looking for a wonderful time of conversation as the woman of God shall also bless us with an inspirational word from the Lord. Blessings to you, Bishop Holt. How are you? Bless you, Bishop. I'm doing well today. Thank the Lord. Yes, yes. So good to see you and how God has raised you up <laughs> during this time. Uh, we know you had a bout and uh, uh, some health issues, but look at God. God Amen. is so good. Amen. Yes, he yes, is. yes. Yes, he well, is. Listen, we're going to start. We're going to have a word of prayer. And we're going to begin. Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for your grace, your mercy. And right now, God, we thank you for the woman of God who you blessed to be in our midst, God. And we thank you for her life, her ministry, and all that she means to the body of Christ. Now, bless us now as we shall share in kingdom talking, kingdom business. And we pray that those listeners will be blessed and inspired, that their saints will be edified, God, and you be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank mm -hmm. God. Well, Bishop Hope, let's start. Let's dive in. I want you to just tell us uh, your background, your, 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 your getting into ministry, your whole conversion experience. Just walk us through uh, uh, Bishop Marjorie Hope's humble beginnings, how it all started for you in ministry. Well, Bishop, I don't think we have time to talk about all of those humble beginnings. <laughs> However, because there have been many, and uh, I'm even reminded of the need for the humble and the humility to continue as we uh, serve the Lord in the body of Christ. But um, Bishop, I was born and reared in Southeast Alabama, um, better known as Sampson, Alabama. And um, I oftentimes when I'm talking uh, around the country, I share that. And, um, you know, people will say, where is Samson, Alabama? And my response is always, you mean you haven't heard about Samson, Alabama? And um, uh, most of them have not <laughs> because it is a little small town. Uh, it appears even smaller now than it was when I was growing up there uh, because many of us have migrated from there. Um, but but it was a great opportunity for a great beginning for me, Bishop. Um, I really learned ministry in Sampson, Alabama. I grew up in the Church of God in Christ and uh, maintain uh, my connection and affiliation with the Church of God in Christ, actually until the Lord uh, elevated me and... Um, sent me to the servanthood role for real of pastoring his people. Uh, but it was there in Sampson, Alabama, where I really began to understand uh, the role of ministry. And I actually learned uh, what to do. And even more than that, uh, was taught what not to do. Uh, so it, it has been uh, quite a journey for me. Uh, I migrated from, um, Alabama, of course, went to college uh, and then moved on to Washington, D.C. for a while where I worked in ministry, but yet 
uh, at that particular time had an opportunity to serve with the great man of God there uh, in Washington, D.C. But also, even at that point, was introduced to a government, uh, started working for the government there in uh, Arlington, Virginia, uh, with the probation department, which really allowed me a little bit more of an in-depth understanding of, of working with people at a much greater level. I was there in uh, the Washington DC area for a number of years and then moved to Toledo, uh, where once again, I connected with uh, the Churches of God in Christ here in the city. And of course, under the late uh, elder T.T. Thomas, when I first moved to uh, Toledo, I joined the Zion at that particular time, Church of God in Christ. Uh, and from that, uh, I served with Elder Martin Johnson, who became the pastor. Uh, and then after Elder Martin Johnson, the late uh, Superintendent Thurman Jefferson at Christian Fellowship, uh, Church of God in Christ, so my beginnings really have been rooted and grounded in the Church of God in Christ. And I served with um, uh, Elder Jefferson there until the Lord called me to uh, greater work. Uh, and I believe though, and even looking at <clears throat> the time of being there with Elder Jefferson and serving in major leadership roles that I really learned the importance of serving God's people at a greater level. Uh, but I want to back up a little bit and go back to Alabama Bishop because uh, one of the things that I learned in the uh, church growing up there, uh, and you pretty much, I can say that uh, the church has been my life, all my life. In fact, uh, many sort of laugh at this, but my mother went into labor at church. So I was a child born uh, literally uh, at the church and it never stopped. So, uh, you know, I, I was really grateful for the opportunity to be able to uh, learn because it even in Alabama, uh, one of the things that the pastor at that time allowed us to do to each adult who had a position in the church, a young person was assigned to work along them. So I got an opportunity to learn really ministry at a greater level, even as a young child. Uh, so I migrated and uh, I ended up in Toledo here where uh, I think and believe that what I'm doing is what God called me to in terms of the elevation. So it has been quite a journey, Bishop. Um, it, it has afforded me a whole lot of opportunities to really assess and reassess uh, and align and sometimes realign uh, the things that God had called me to do with this vision. That, that's awesome. That's awesome. Also, uh, uh, I was trying to pull up your um, bio. <laughs> you know, these doggone machines act do what they want to do. Uh, but uh, Bishop, you uh, during your tenure, I remember the wall crack and when you was working in the mayor's office and all of the community things that you had your hands in and you you kind of spearheaded and um, you brought to the to, to, to the Leo area and and how you were instrumental in doing a lot of the community programming citywide, you know, bringing also ecumenical uh, uh, relationships together in the church uh, through different denominations, how you just brought everybody together, how God used you in those days to do the same. But but let me jump here because as as a bishop in the Lord's church, what were your struggles and the, and, and the kind of um, a resistance you might have faced being a woman and uh, being elevated to the office of bishop because you know the day we live in you got the the narcissists <laughs> and the people who have problem with gender well well bishop one of the things that uh, my testimony is not as horrific as some other uh women who are 
serving in ministry who's pastoring and have also been consecrated as bishops. And um, I don't know if the Lord just favored me in many of those places because uh, the reality is I've not suffered some of the uh, heartaches that many of my uh, cohorts have in the ministry. Uh, in fact, I'm reminded of, of a church here in Toledo who never had a female to even stand behind the sacred wood podium. Um, and they were very surprised that I was the first one to do it. And, um, and I don't know if God once again favored me or if uh, the reality was what it was that somebody had to do it and God chose me to do it and uh, worked with the heart of the pastor who had not permitted females to, uh, you know, to stand in the, in the podium in the, at the pulpit. So I've not had a lot of uh, issues that uh, many others have had, but I do know that there are still struggles that many have uh, with women in ministry. And um, I knew Bishop, you were going to, to ask me that question. And the one thing that I sort of derived at just in terms of being able to respond to that in this hour is that what I know is that God does not call gender. Uh, he does not call us because we are male or female. He calls us um, to expect that we will be obedient and that we will walk in obedience. And um, I don't struggle with that. Um, I, I know that it is quite uh, an issue presently, but I really have been blessed, Bishop, <laughs> as a female in the ministry, as a female pastor, and even as a bishop, I've not faced the opposition that many have. Um, and I thank God for it, but once again, uh, it's still a struggle. It's still a struggle. In fact, uh, I received a phone call uh, a week or so ago, and um, one of the, uh, she was an evangelist, in fact, had said that she had received information about one of the um, denominations who is having on the table whether or not to uh, ordain female pastors in the denomination. And, um, you know, I, I don't know what to tell people in this hour, because number one, you're not going to get a fight from me about whether or not God called a woman. Uh, I just think he calls uh, genderless us to be obedient. Uh, not because I'm a great female, not because you're a great male. I just think once again, he's looking for obedience and those of us who are willing to answer the call and do what he's called us to do. But yes, we're still struggling in this 21st century church with females being called to pastor uh, and elevated to the office of bishop. Wow, wow, wow. And see, the other thing, uh, let's back up because uh, in going through your bio, uh, now that I got it up here and I, it worked for me. Uh, <laughs> let's pick up and say, Dr. Dr. Holt, you served as a talk show host uh, uh, for WTOL TV and WTVG TV 13, WNWO TV 24, WNGT TV 48, and WJCM AM and WKKO FM radio. Yes, sir. All of that as, as a TV radio personality. What were those years? What was that, was that time like? Those are great years for me, Bishop. Um, I call those the formative years that really prepared me to be able to deal with um, issues at large from A to Z and be able to really, uh, at that particular time, interact with people from all different walks of life, all different vocations, and uh, understand at a greater level that uh, we are called to do a whole lot of things uh, because a lot of things are needed by us and from us. Uh, those were great years. In fact, uh, those 
those years opened some doors for me. Um, I became the, uh, for the TV talk show host, um, just having a community service program really to interview different people uh, to talk about community issues, uh, state issues, as well as national issues. Uh, and from that, uh, I was chosen as one of the, I'm probably getting ahead of you uh, because my bio is pretty extensive. I've been pretty busy. I haven't been sitting too much. Uh, I've probably sat more in the past two years than I have for quite a while. Um, but, you know, those years really prepared the way and opened some doors for me uh, mm -hmm. as uh, I, I navigated through the television talk show host and in fact, I was, you talked about the, the uh, War on Crack tour that uh, I was able to be instrumental in sharing with the city and bringing national artists, um, dealing with the issue that we had in our community um, with heroin and with crack. Um, I, I was employed with an, a substance abuse agency that allowed me to be able to do that and bringing much more attention to uh, the addiction issues that we had in our community. So I was able really to, um, to you know, project that there would be many things and many opportunities from there that ushered me really into the radio. When I left television, I went to radio um, and we had the WJCM radio where I served as the PR person as and one of the CEOs there. Uh, being able to bring gospel 24 hour radio to the Toledo area. Uh, so yes, those were great years for me in terms of developing and forming and being able to continue to navigate into different parts of the careers and looking at where my next move was gonna be because obviously, as you see there, there was always an another at a next move. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and not now, with all of that, the Lord put it in your heart uh, to birth out the Bethesda Christian Church, Bethesda Christian Center. Walk us through that because not only that, uh, you, you, you founded the Interfaith Fellowship Churches of Churches International. So let's, let's talk about those, those two things that the Lord uh, uh, blessed you to do. Yes, sir. I was um, serving with uh, the late uh, Superintendent Thurman Jefferson when the Lord uh, called me to uh, birth the Bethesda Christian Center, mm -hmm. uh, which was quite an experience. And um, one of the ways and one of the things that really comforted my spirit, Bishop was to know that God had called me to do that because every door that we walked into, God opened and made a way. Um, I mean, from the building all the way to pews, to music instruments, everything that we needed to be able to uh, provide and sustain in the ministry God provided. And initially, Bishop, the idea was not really to uh, open as a church. It was just going to be a group of people coming together to really share in the word. And I was just going to lead the group. Well, it got bigger than just us coming together, um, meeting in a room and people began to come and the word began to uh, get out and was spread it. So, you know, I realized at that point that God was moving us into doing something on a little larger scale. And that was a time back in 1997, really, when the Lord um, just provided, opened the door, uh, had an opportunity to purchase a building and God said, I want you to buy it before anybody else walks in. And that we did. We walked into a building that was paid off um, when we had our very first service. And it was that building that really uh, paved the way for us to be obedient with those things that God had blessed us with there. And uh, from there, he provided and opened another door uh, and we were able, as we were growing and outgrowing that building in North Toledo, God's, you know, he spoke, opened the door, we walked in, 
and uh, inherited a, a block long building, Bishop, that needed to be renovated. And when I say renovated, I mean renovated. If you can imagine a block long building that needed to be renovated. Uh, but God blessed us. He gave us favor uh, everywhere we turn. People were blessing us and we were getting from uh, baby grand pianos donated, you know, until everything else uh, that we needed to be able to have a comprehensive ministry. And that is what God had given me. You know, he didn't want us just to be another church. Uh, he put us in a place where we could provide, we could serve, we could really assist people. Uh, who really needed it. We were on a corner where, uh, right in the midst almost of the red light district. And uh, there were homeless people. There were, you know, the prostitutes were there. You know, it was just a barrage of folks that needed what we had been commissioned to provide. And um, we did that. We did that. God gave us favor on the corner. And uh, we had people that, we blessed, uh, we fed, I mean, homeless, we sheltered, uh, food, you know, we provided it all. And it was just a great opportunity to do real ministry, real hands-on ministry, and really teaching people what serving is all about, because that's really what ministry is. It's all about serving, um, not us being served, but serving others. And uh, God opened that door for us to be able to do that. Uh, in those two buildings. And actually, in the course of, of more than 23 years now, uh, God has permitted us to uh, own three buildings, uh, one of which we still own, that um, we were able to pay it off in record time uh, in South Toledo area. And um, we just bless God for what God was able to give us uh, at the ministry. And I think it was really Bishop because of our obedience to the vision that God had given me uh, and being able to have people who uh, understood what the vision was. I wrote it, I made it plain, I shared it and they ran with it. Um, and that's what has been the backbone of the Bethesda Christian Center. Uh, really understanding that if you're going to do what it is that God for you to do, you need to understand the vision and be able to run with the vision and make the vision work. And um, that's what has happened at Bethesda. Now, you got to tell us because your bio also, also reflects that you were the chairman of the Toledo Gospel Arts Festival, founder of the Toledo Mentoring Program, uh, producer of the War on Crack Gospel Tour. We talked about that. But you served as the only African-American deputy registrar in Northwest Ohio and produced the Gospel Music Awards. Yes, sir. You, 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 you got to talk about all of that. <laughs> well, Bishop, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot. Let's, let's start with the Gospel, Toledo Gospel Arts Festival. Uh, I grew up in a family where my mother was very, um, very committed to music. In fact, there were 10 of us, five girls and five boys. We had our own choir. Uh, so music was all always a part of our life. Um, and today it still is. Uh, so I was able to uh, use the, the growing up years with my music uh, and really be able to be a part of something on a much bigger scale that was going to benefit all of us. The Toledo Gospel Arts Festival was the one thing back in 1997, 98, that brought our community the only major event that took place in the downtown Toledo area at that time for 13 years was the Toledo Gospel Arts Festival, where we started out actually with seven days. And um, that just got to be too much because we were exhibiting not just uh, the groups and the choirs coming together, but we were showcasing uh, local artists as well. 
And that's why, of course, it was called the Toledo Gospel Arts Festival. Um, and we, we decided after a number of years that um, we would condense that uh, and we felt like we could get just as much in based upon how we were doing it. So we went to three days and uh, down through the years, we continued to have that festival that provided such um, wholesome, healthy, coming together community event that everyone looked forward to. In fact, Bishop, <laughs> uh, I, there, there's not a time throughout the course of the week or month that someone doesn't still walk up to me and ask, are you ever going to do the Toledo Gospel Arts Festival again? Because it was such a great opportunity for all of us to come together, uh, which really did do something in unifying our community. And um, by virtue of the fact that it did that, there was always the motivation to continue to do it because we did it annually. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it continued to move and progress because as I went to the uh, radio station, WJCM, I was able to network with uh, people like yourself. Um, and we were able to do the Gospel Music Awards, which was an awesome event it allowed us to showcase at a little different level uh, the local groups who had worked really um, tirelessly to be able to utilize their gifts and their talents as um, soloists, as quartets, as choirs, as praise teams. And we were able to really bring all of them together and identify winners. And it was just what it said. It was a music awards program. And we did that for two years and um, God blessed us during that time. Uh, and let's kind of move on because there's quite a bit there, Bishop, <laughs> on my bio that I've done. I've been busy, I, I have been busy. Uh, and from that, I was able to um, be selected as the only African-American deputy registrar at the time that would be serving in Northwest Ohio. That was quite an honor. That was quite an honor for me. And of course, you know, that, those that's the license where we get our license and our tags and all of that uh, title mm -hmm. work, um, which was a blessing for me to be able to serve in that capacity. All right, you grab what you want to grab out of this next section, <laughs> but uh, in conjunction with uh, your, your, your duties as a publisher, the books, the 15 books that you authored and being a motivational speaker, consultant, workshop facilitator, trainer, and catalyst for change, former social worker and educator, where you served as the first clergy to serve ever, ever as executive assistant to uh, any mayor in the city of Toledo, you were appointed to as commissioner of training for the Toledo, uh, city of Toledo, providing diversity, ethics, customer relations and management training for the entire workforce. You're right. And then of course, uh, we get to the part where you were consecrated and elevated uh, to the office of Bishop uh, in uh, 2009. And then all of your training, working with uh, the diversity director for, at the Lucas County Children Services, president of the Silver Service Commission for the city of Toledo. And then you launched your faith-based newspaper. Uh, listen, you've been going on. Then you have the publisher of the Interfaith uh, Gazette newspaper. Uh, it just goes on and on and on and on. And uh, uh, listen, it's so much, and we appreciate what God has done through you. And then you're president of the Civic Service Commission for the city of Toledo, and then uh, all that you've done. And uh, we praise God for that. I want you to talk about the uh, uh, your books that you've authored and the helps that they provide to the body of Christ. Well, thank you, Bishop, uh, for that opportunity. Yes, I have written about 15 books. And, uh, um, you know, my very first book 
uh, titled Give Up, Grow Up, Heal, was authored after about 16 years. It actually took me that long to do it uh, based upon what I was going through and being able to share my life and, you know, those experiences at a much deeper, greater level. Uh, and from that, I continue to, because I've always desired and wanted to um, be one who really loved writing. And uh, I was able to do that in all of the books that I have published. Um, and it just went from, from Give Up, Grow Up, Heal to Spotting the Fakes in the House. That was just an opportunity to be able to identify when people walk in our churches, um, who is and who is not, and being able to know from um, what they brought to the house, to the ability of the leader to be able to identify what they brought in the house and not miss it because it could easily make or break the ministry. Uh, that's what that one was about. Um, also, um, it's, it's been quite a few that I've been able to, to publish uh, a covering or covenant uh, what you were never told about in Sunday school or at the church barbecue, talking about the importance of establishing covenant relationships uh, as opposed to just having someone who say they cover you, uh, someone who checks in with you periodically, but being in covenant with someone, whether that's a spiritual father or spiritual mother, or just having uh, the opportunity to be able to connect on a broad, much broader basis. Um, and, and I've been able to provide training um, for and with a number of those books that many down through the years and across the country, I provided training uh, and certainly serving as a commissioner of training for the city of Toledo under uh, the late Mr. Jack Ford as mayor that afforded me great opportunity to be able to introduce, um, besides the religious trainings and, and uh, seminars and workshops that I was able to uh, provide to communities, to churches, to groups, uh, to businesses, I was able to provide those um, non-religious non trainings, such as leadership, um, customer service, uh, ethics, looking at management, supervision, was able to do that uh, at the city and training the entire workforce of 3000 plus employees. And even being able to expand beyond that in training other county employees. Um, so I've had extensive trainings, opportunities to train. Uh, I enjoy it. I have a passion for leadership and I have even been able to provide a number of those years of experiences in some of my books. Um, 60 Minute Bodybuilders is one of my books that uh, pastors across the country still ask for because the concept of that is to provide um, methodologies and approaches in strengthening congregations from the inside out. Uh, being able to allow what we call a wellness check uh, to evaluate the, the health and the wholesomeness of your congregation, especially leaders. Um, so that, that has been one of the most requested books that I've authored. Uh, I also, From a Grasshopper to a Giant, which has really helped us on an individual level, be able to look at some of the strengths and weaknesses that we have as individuals who want to just really um, help ourselves to grow and evolve and be able to become promoted in wholesome, healthy things as it comes you know, to our egos and, and as it comes to just wholesome healthiness. Um, and there are many others. How Not to Let Your Ministry Die or Let It Kill You is now a popular one. Um, that's written strictly for those who are in ministry. 
um, and those who really want to kind of move away from, you know, is this working? Uh, to being able to identify this is what God called me to do. And here are some things that I need to do to keep it moving and not let what God gave me on the inside of me die. Um, and of course, Bishop, as you know, during the pandemic, uh, I wrote a book, Postmodern Pandemic and Church Pandemonium. And that's just was an opportunity to give us uh, sort of an inside peek at how we can deal in the churches to, to navigate you know, this pandemic and what it is that we can look at uh, in being able to really survive it in an unconditional way, uh, non-traditional way. Um, and I have a new book that has not really been introduced to uh, the world yet, but it will be, it will be. We will be having a um, uh, book signing in the few months to come. And that's called post-traumatic spiritual disorder. Uh, and that's dealing with what it is that we uh, do after we get saved, <laughs> after we become sanctified, after yeah. we're so holy and set apart and called out and chosen and to do the, all of these particular things, how um, all of the good things somehow evolve into becoming liabilities at times for us. Yeah, yeah. Bishop, move, move a little bit to your left. You got sunlight coming in uh, that's blocking your face. Yes, sir. There you go. Yeah. Is that better? The sun was coming in on you. Yes, it yeah. is coming in. It's shining really bright yeah. and light. Well, we're, we're so delighted. Listen, we praise God uh, for what you bring to the body of Christ from your experiences, from your knowledge and your wisdom. Uh, uh, tell us about your affiliation. And uh, when I mentioned uh, the group to you back when we first started, why, why did you... Uh, choose to uh, affiliate with the Interdenominational Assembly of Churches? Well, Bishop, first of all, you all tricked me. <laughs> you know, <laughs> let me make sure that's on record. Y'all tricked me. Yes. Uh, y'all did. Y'all had me coming to Winston-Salem, North Carolina to talk about ministry and all of that only to find out that you all had another motive and another interior for me. Um, which was a delight after I finally said yes. Uh, but one of the things about the um, Interdenominational Assembly of Churches is uh, the fact that there was an opportunity to just experience uh, genuine fellowship, genuine fellowship without any reservation, it was so real. It was so genuine. It was an opportunity to really see, quote, real folk, real people, um, and real people who didn't mind sharing and pouring into others, um, not looking for something in return, but just being willing to give what God had given them and willing to share that with others. Um, that was my very first um, observation of the Interdenominational Assembly of Churches. The second thing, uh, Bishop, was the fact that it was just absent of insanity. There, there just didn't seem to be a lot of drama um, surrounding it, you know, and, and many of us know what that means when it comes to church work. Uh, we get more caught up on church work than God's work. And when it's about church work, then there's always a lot of drama. Um, and I didn't, I didn't see that and I have not seen that. And the absence of the drama really sort of helps me stay focused. It helps me stay rooted and grounded. And that was just an opportunity to see real people doing real work for real God uh, with real benefits in serving as opposed to wanting to be served because we have seen so much of that. It has just literally at times, I think, destroyed what the mission and the vision 
uh, that we say God gives us um, has, has literally destroyed that. Um, and the other thing is just that the, the presence of authenticity, it, it was just so present. It afforded us an opportunity to be able to share, uh, be transparent, be open, um, and to, to know that what we shared, um, the unity, the fellowship really was real, that there was not gonna be any, you know, tit for tat kind of thing, um, no competition, we're all in this together. So it's an opportunity for us to be healthy as leaders, you know, to evolve in a way that we didn't feel threatened. Uh, we weren't intimidated and it was never to intimidate others because of what you brought or because of who you were. Uh, the size of our congregations don't and didn't matter. Uh, they still don't matter. Uh, and it was just wholesome for people to be able to come together and enjoy the fellowship, the camaraderie, uh, the exchange, the pastor to pastor, uh, being able to trust, which you know is a big deal for us as leaders. You know, who can I trust? Um, because we've all been victims and have been victimized, uh, should I say, um, in, in sometimes being able to share with the wrong ones and not knowing uh, at the time that you're sharing that you're gonna hear it again. And the next time you hear it, uh, you're gonna have an addendum to it. So IAC has really been um, a great fellowship. And I would encourage anyone who's looking for realness and authenticity to consider that. Bishop, you've been a great leader um, in this fellowship. It's a fellowship and um, that's what we do. Thank you, thank you. Uh, that's that's what we do, uh, and and people have been calling, and uh, we've been adding pastors and churches, and it's it's a non-invasive, non-intrusive fellowship. Uh, every church keeps its own autonomy. We're not fighting over doctrinal differences. We're finding common ground mm -hmm. and working it together, and. Um, trying to do what the Lord prayed about in John 17. Father, make them one yeah. as you and I are one. So uh, we're trying to team. We're, we're better together, mm -hmm. you know, and um, thank God for the men and women who are a part. And, and, and then we want people to know that uh, your other affiliations uh, does not hinder affiliating and being a part. We, we welcome the versatility and the experience uh, that you bring from other places to share and to lend with us. But I tell people all the time, the story that well, the burden that God put in my spirit was for pastors. I'm pro pastor. And uh, I think if we realize if, if, if we have healthy pastors, we will have healthy churches and healthy ministries because so go the head, so goes the body. So uh, uh, we, we're definitely pushing uh, to strengthen the men and women of God who stands in leadership and we share, I don't have it all. And so it blesses me uh, whenever we share together to hear the many giftings and anointings that are among us, how they expound the word of God and bring revelation and sharing with us is such a great blessing. And of course, that pastor to pastor feature is always a blessing to us. Listen, Bishop, you, you have been so gracious and we thank God for how he's raised you up and you are a living testimony to the mighty hand of God and his healing power. I want you to take a few moments uh, this evening and um, as the Lord will lead you to minister to God's people. We're still dealing with uh, the pandemic, the virus, and we're still dealing with deaths and sicknesses and 
everything around our worlds have been turned upside down and people are still trying to figure out how they're going to navigate through this season. Uh, we're at what's called the anniversary of this pandemic. We're in March when this thing really hit us uh, uh, the way it did last year in 2020. And here we are in 2021. And I want you to be an encouragement as the Lord shall lead you to bless God's people today and encourage them. Yes, Bishop, I, I want to just, um, just for a couple minutes, um, that's all I need. Uh, I was just praying about where the Lord has allowed us to come uh, to at this point in this pandemic. And uh, I began to ask the Lord, what is it that you would have me share with uh, the people of God and those who are, are viewing and those who are listening? And the Lord took me to Joel, the second chapter, and uh, the 32nd verse, and I'm just going to read it and uh, expound a little bit and encourage somebody, hopefully. Uh, and it says, and whoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered and saved. I could stop right there, but I won't. Um, for in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem, there should be those who escape as the Lord has said and among of the remnant or the survivor shall be those whom the Lord calls. And I just wanted to uh, sort of talk a minute and encourage somebody. Uh, and the Lord brought this to me and he said, tell the people of God that if you are viewing this, if you are uh, hearing this, or if you are still with us, still among us, then you are the remnant that was left. And I started thinking and I said, God, what, what, what is a remnant? When you think about where we are and you think about the things that we are doing and you think about this pandemic and where we have come from and, and where we are, I go back to thinking about my grandmother making the quilts and, and, and from the quilts, there were different pieces that were put together. And in those pieces being put together, uh, it was an opportunity to be able to uh, unify, to be able to unify just to get a blanket or just to get a quilt or just to get something in one piece. And, and then it, it reminded me of the fact that that when they put, she put all of, Okay, let me, let me go back. Is that better, Bishop? I can't hear you. Okay. That's it, that's it. Okay, I couldn't hear you. And, and I know the sun was doing its thing. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I, I wanna, wanna just, let me go back just a little bit. Um, and talk about the remnant. That, that's what I really want to talk about for this moment here that I have left. Uh, and I, I'm reminded of my grandmother putting a quilt together and, and using different pieces. And, and the goal was really to make a quilt, to make a blanket, but to use everything that was needed. And sometimes there were more uh, pieces than that were needed. And, and those pieces that were not needed were called remnants, were called remnants. And, and when I started thinking about it, um, God said, if, if we are still here, if we survive 2020, 
and we are in the third month of 2021, then we are remnants. We are remnants. And, and because we are remnants, when something happened to that original piece of that quilt or that blanket that was made by my grandmother and my mother, there was never a thought that the pieces that were left were going to be needed again because they had already been used. They had already been a part of completing uh, the, the blanket, the, the quilt. So unless something happens to the quilt or the blanket, you will never need that piece. But watch this, at times things happen to the blanket. At times things happen to the quilt. And because there was always an opportunity of wanting it to appear whole, wanting it to be uh, the perfect piece, the perfect specimen of a quilt, there was always an opportunity to go back and look for those pieces that were left because now you need them. What am I saying? If God allowed us to go through 2020 and survive it, and here we are in 2021, you need to understand that you are remnant. God preserved you, he preserved me, he preserved us for purpose. He left us here on purpose. And we didn't need the remnant, they didn't need the remnant for the past, but they needed the remnant for the future. And God is saying there is purpose on your life. Joel prepared the people. He says, here's the warning. If you don't get yourself together, the plague is coming. There are some things that you need to understand. But if you obey God, if you hear the voice of God and you do what it is that God has called you to do, he said in his word, I'm going to deliver you. I'm going to save you. And you're going to be the remnant that's left. You're going to survive this thing. So I want to encourage somebody today to know that, listen, being a remnant is necessary. Being saved on purpose is necessary. You need to know that God said, I've got a place for you in your future because you are needed and you are necessary. You are relevant to what I'm doing in this hour. God bless you. Thank you, Bishop. Oh, Lord. Thanks. You've heard it here. On Spotlight on Ministry, our bishop, the one and only Bishop Marjorie Holt. Listen, Bishop, tell us where your church is located and your ministry times, uh, uh, your Bible study. Just give us your full schedule of your ministry. Well, Bishop, we are excited about going back into the building. Um, yeah. We know that we continue to do ministry. Uh, during the pandemic, but we are excited about going back into the building uh, the first Sunday uh, in April, which will be Easter Sunday. We're located at 5967 Telegraph Road here in Toledo, and that is in the Pavilion Plaza, 5967 Telegraph Road. Our services are at 11 o'clock. Um, we obviously are doing virtual Bible study on Tuesday. And because we're excited about getting back into uh, the building and doing what it is that we believe when we all come together, uh, we believe there's gonna be a Holy Ghost explosion, but we bless God and we, we invite you to come and be a part of what we're doing. Uh, there are many ministries. Uh, the women's ministry is preparing a uh, luncheon on uh, April 24th at 11 o'clock a.m. And uh, the men's department is working hard. Uh, the Joshua School of Leadership, we have many things that uh, we have as part of the vision that God has given us at Bethesda. So we invite you, um, you know, we're excited about uh, our youth pastor coming on board. So there are many things that we are working on, working towards, mm -hmm. and are excited about God helping us to bring them to pass. Oh, blessings, blessings, blessings. Well, thanks. If you're in the Toledo area, certainly you would do yourself a favor to stop by uh, and visit Bishop Holt and the Saints at Bethesda Christian Church. We want to thank you, Bishop, and uh, we bless you for all that you do and for what you mean to the body of Christ. Uh, we just praise God. Uh, 
And those of you that are listening, listen, if you if you missed any part of this, you can go back to the Interdenominational Assembly of Churches Facebook page or Fellowship of Music and Arts page, Bishop Andre S. Woods page. It's all there. And it'll be on YouTube and you can view it there. Uh, go back and listen and listen and listen and share. Like and share with family and friends. We encourage you to do that. And then let me share this. We get ready. Mark your calendars for Friday, March the 26th will be our first uh, fellowship, our quarterly fellowship worship of 2021. And that's going to be right here virtually on the Interdenominational Assembly of Churches USA page. Our preacher for that night will be uh, none other than Pastor David L.P., pastor of so much to more ministries here in the city of Detroit, dynamic preacher and man of God. He's going to be sharing in the word. You don't want to miss, mark your calendars, March 26th, Friday night, 7.30 p.m. right here, live virtual worship service. Uh, it's going to be a blessing and we're looking forward to it. And then of course, we'll be back and tell you about our May conference coming up uh teaching conference three nights in the month of may so we got a lot of things coming up and we praise god for all of the ministry gifts shout out to all of our pastors and member churches of the fellowship tonight we're going to pray and we're going to be gone for this time bishop i want to pray for you father we bless you now yes and we thank you for our sister the ministry gift bishop marjorie hope we thank you, God, for what you blessed her to do, all of the anointing and the giftings that you've invested in her, how she has so unselfishly given of herself over the years. We thank you, God, for her witness. We thank you, God, for how you've raised her up and touched her body that she can stand again and proclaim your word uh, with boldness and with clarity. We ask you now to continue crown her head with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Uh, give her much revelation, God, as she leads your people. Lead her as she shall lead your church. And then we pray, God, that whatsoever our hands may touch, you will cause it to prosper. And we thank you for your word, Psalms uh, 90 and 17. And we pray, let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon you and establish the work of thy hands. Yea, the work of thy hands establish thou it. Now, God, we ask your blessings. Give her the desires of her heart. In Jesus' name, we pray. Bless the saints and the church at Bethesda Christian Church. Oh, God, bless them to follow her as you as she follow Christ. Give them as much as they need, God, for ministry's sake, spiritually, mentally, physically, financially, God. We pray for a spiritual outpour, and we pray for a financial, supernatural abundance we pray for provision for the vision and we know god only you can do it and we look to you tonight in jesus name we pray thank god amen, amen. well bless you saints and thank you bishop uh for being here and sharing with us we're looking forward to fellowship again amen thank you bishop all right Saints, don't forget, join us now. We're looking forward to it. And uh, keep up with us at all our pages for all of the future events we got coming up. God bless you. We love you.